Well, hello guys, welcome back to John's workshop. Bit of a different backdrop, you might be thinking. And why is that? Well, trouble at mill. So, I'm stood in front of the car, largely because my rear suspension has just packed up. So we'll just move the camera and show you what that looks like in terms of a diagnosis. And we'll explain a little bit about what's going on. So, this is a BMW 5 Series. It's got air suspension at the back, which is obviously sounds expensive and as you'll find out shortly, it is expensive. And you'll see that the wheels are firmly up inside the arches and this thing is sat down on not quite the bump stops, but almost the bump stops. There are some short springs, I think, right at the bottom. So this let go on me this morning on the motorway and I've had to return home from work well, I didn't even get to work, I had to return home. I've worked from home today and it's now the evening and we're just trying to get into understanding what this is all about, having done a little bit of research on YouTube. So I'll just pan back a little bit. So we've got the car up on some ramps. These are actually the motorhome ramps and I'm making good use of the fall on the driveway to give me enough room to be able to crawl in under the back of the car to be able to get to where the compressor unit and the air valve unit is that drives the air suspension. So you've seen the car, you've seen the situation. I'm going to film the rest of this in the workshop until we get right to the very end. So we're just going to move into the workshop now and we're going to do a bit of discussion around how this system works and what we think the fault might be. Okay, so very, very quickly uh, the first thing that's obvious is you can see why I don't design cars for a living and secondly we're just going to have a quick look at the system function. So under the back of the car where you've just seen me pointing out under the ramps right under the back there is a compressor unit and some valve solenoid valves as part of that unit and some pipe work and things like that. And largely they, the compressor supplies air pressure through some pipes to two airbags that control the ride height at the back of the car and that ride height is altered by quite a few things it's altered by the weight that's in the car it's altered by the the driver setting the mode setting so if you've got it on eco or you've got it on comfort or you've got it on sport so if you put it into sport mode it drops the rear stiffens everything up uh, for more better handling that kind of thing so this thing has got some variability in it it doesn't just pump things up to a, a height on top of each of these airbags well somewhere in that location there will be a couple of switches that detect where the height that the car's at so all of that's linked into the same circuit so when the car reaches the right height and the switches tell the system that it's at the right height the compressor will knock off at that point and then if you loaded the car up with lots of weight obviously you would compress the air in the bags everything would drop the switches would drop which then says I need more air to get back up to the right ride height so largely that's how it's how it works it's quite quite a simple thing so I've not filmed me taking the compressor unit out of here I've taken it out already it's on the bench we're going to get into that in a moment we're just going to come back and talk about cost okay I hope you're all sitting down we'll get into cost so my local BMW dealership, which is Dumfries, I'll call them out, have looked at this and they've suggested we replace the entire compressor unit. So that's the compressor unit, the valves and various other bits and pieces. You'll see that just shortly at a cost of £2,100. So that's to fit an OEM part, original equipment manufacturer's part, so BMW's parts, which isn't actually BMW, it's, it's, uh, it's a different make and we'll show you that just shortly. Um, so yeah, that's what they want to charge me to fix this problem. Uh, a non-OEM copy, so a non-original -e equipment manufacturer's copy of the same thing. I can pick one of those up for about £550 for the whole unit. And on the unit, as you'll see just shortly, there are some solenoid valves um, and they cost about £25 each. Again, not original equipment, probably uh, imported from China, but that's roughly the cost of those. So three different prices to go into the mix. 
So I'm now just going to talk very quickly about the fault itself, how it's manifested itself and the kind of diagnosis that I think I've come to based on that fault track. And interesting to note, I gave that history to my local BMW dealer of that history and fault and of what I think it might be and they still uh, they still came back with that's the fix so I'll come back in a moment and talk a little bit about diagnosis and fault okay I think I used the wrong word just now when I said diagnosis we've still to do that what I meant was symptoms so the symptoms of the fault are it's intermittent so this has been happening for a few weeks very very seldom and not catastrophically like it was this morning over a very very long period of time so over two or three days <clears throat> the car will drop when the car's not been used and then the moment you start the car it comes back up again fairly quickly uh, now that's progressed to losing all air and whilst driving which obviously is very dangerous um, and what I will say though is equal both sides so when the car drops it's not dropping on one side and not the other and also the fact that sometimes because it's intermittent sometimes you park the car up it doesn't drop every time it was only certain times which tells me that the airbags are fine so if the airbags were cracked and leaking it would be constantly dropping it would be a repeatable thing so I know the airbags are good and I know the problem sits with the compressor unit or the valves so that's the fault diagnosis as I said I gave that to BMW but they, they still just said and I, and I guess because they're an OEM they just replace the whole unit as a one and make very good money off the back of that I would imagine that's how they make most of their money a bit like most big OEMs in sales and in service uh, uh, rather than sales so hence the high price ticket so what we're going to do now I'm, I'm done with the whiteboard you'll all be pleased to know I'm going to move in and we're just going to have a quick look round the compressor unit. It's on the bench and then we're going to start taking it apart and see if we can then diagnose what we think the problem is. Okay, so this is the unit. It's a Wabco. That was the name I was trying to remember. So it's all Wabco parts. They're not BMW. So what we've got here is an uh, electric motor at the bottom that drives a crank with a conrod and a piston this is a cylinder and cylinder head at the top here so the, the, the motor drives compresses the air in the cylinder that then moves through into this section which is the compressor tank if you want to call it that very small and it's also an air dryer so this is full of desiccant that takes the moisture out of the air that then goes into this unit which has got built within it a uh, solenoid release valve that I was talking about earlier to let excess pressure out uh, and it's also got the air inlet which is here and that goes off in a big pipe to a, an air filter unit so this is where it draws air in and then the air comes out of the centre hole I've already taken this pipe out comes out into this pipe runs along here into this secondary solenoid valve block that's got basically two valves sat within it and it's also got two outputs which are here and here and one goes to each airbag left and right on the car so very very simple really in terms of overall operation so when this has got up to pressure the the valves are controlling the pressure out to the airbags and the solenoid valve here is compressing is controlling the discharge of air to let air back out the system now I suspect and based on some research on YouTube I suspect that it's this solenoid valve here that lets the air out of the system which is not working so I think that is staying in a permanently open position which means the pressure never builds up in the cylinder therefore doesn't get into the airbags or this has got an intermittent fault on it where the airbags have got pressure in but then this won't stay closed it'll open and then not quite close which means all of the air comes back out of the airbags and hence the car goes down so I'm suspecting this solenoid valve which is the 25 pound option that I've spoken about so the next job now we're going to get some tools together and we're going to start taking this to bits and what I'm also going to be looking for is while, I've, while I'm at it, while I've got it on the bench uh, I'm going to check the desiccant in here to make sure that it's not full of water from uh, moisture in the air 
So we're just going to gen generally give that bit a once over. We're going to check the state of the piston ring and uh, yeah, just give it a general once over. And we need to take it apart to get this solenoid valve out anyway. So I'll get some tools together and I'll bring you back. Okay, we've got a T30 Torx which we're going to open the cylinder, take the cylinder head off. So there we go, there's our cylinder head with a valve at the top of it. We've lost our seal, o-ring seal. And there's our piston with a rubber o-ring. And another valve, like a butterfly valve on top of the piston. So that all looks to be in good condition. Piston looks good, can't see any any nasties on there. So we're going to focus now on stripping this bit down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this solenoid valve, which is the decompression valve. And what I believe to be the offending article. So there's our there's our valve. Not as bad as some of the ones I've seen on the internet that have got quite a lot of corrosion around here, suggesting there's been lots of damp in there. I'm just going to get see if I can find a pipe of some sort to put on here to blow through to test this. It should be in a closed condition at the moment, and we're going to test it and see if we can feel any air coming out of the out of the sort of dump valve area around the outside. Okay, from what I understand, this solenoid should be in a normally closed position and when you apply a voltage to it, it then opens and there will be a piston inside here that seals up against the back of this valve. So we've just got a bit of brass tubing that I've chamfered in the end to try and get a seal on this plastic piece here and we're just going to blow into it. And there's just air pouring out the sides of the valve there. So as I suspected, the piston is stuck in the down position. So I think this is the this is the part that's faulty. So what we're going to do now, I've I've ordered a new one of these to come in. In the meantime, we're going to carry on and take a look inside the compressor itself and check to see if we've got any moisture in the air dryer. So I've just got a bit of rag underneath to try and stop this slipping about. Need to be careful with this because this is under spring pressure. So there we go, that's our cylinder head off, our spring off, an o-ring and I'm now just going to get something to capture the desiccant when we take this out and have a look what's going on inside here. Okay, let's, uh, let's dig in.
Okay, so I'm not going to, looking at that, I'm not going to dig in any further. If, the, if there was moisture in here, these would all be dark brown and they would all be stuck together. So I don't have a moisture problem. That can sometimes be an issue on these. Not an issue I've got. That all looks very clean. There is no point me tipping all of that out to do anything more than inspection. So I'm going to put that back together off camera and we'll carry on. Okay, we've got our new solenoid valve. So we're just going to fit that now into the unit, which is going to be easier said than done because this one's There we go. The valve was actually coming apart. Okay, time to rebuild the main assembly. So we've got our rubber seal back in. Hopefully that's going to stay in place. There we go, just got to put our pipe back in the back here, I'll just do that off camera and then we'll take this unit back to the car and get it fitted back into position. So I just thought I'd add, you might ask why I've not stripped this valve block down while I've got the unit out to check the operation of these valves. So if we go back to our symptoms that I discussed earlier. There's two valves in here, independent, one for the left side, one for the right side. And as I said with the symptoms, the car was always dropping uniformly both sides. So therefore, there's two or three main reasons I'm not looking at this. One reason is, if these valves were faulty, they would have had to have failed at exactly the same time by exactly the same amount. Otherwise, the car would be dropping unevenly one side more than the other. So the chances of both of those valves failing at exactly the same time by exactly the same amount is probably into the millions to one chances of that being the case. Another reason is we've already found an issue with this valve therefore the chances of all three valves failing not only those two at the same time and by the same amount but at the same time as this valve is probably in the hundreds of millions to one and the third reason being that these valves should only ever see dry air based on what I've shown with the dryer in here so the dry air comes out so these valves only ever see dry air this valve on the other hand sees wet and dry air and it's quite a clever idea so when this valve discharges air out of the system it doesn't discharge it directly from the system i.e. the dry air that you've pumped in the air comes back through the dryer unit to obviously dry out the desiccant that's in here. So if you've got dampness in here, then dampness will be going through this valve in an attempt to dry out that desiccant in the dryer unit. So therefore this valve is far more likely to fail before these valves do because this valve is subject to moisture in the air as well. And as we confirmed earlier, we've got a dry compressor and a dry desiccant. So I, I'm fairly confident that these valves are in pretty good shape. So with all of that, we'll now go and get this fitted back into the car. 
So, the big switch on. Let's see what happens. Well, there we go guys, £2,100 or £25, you decide. I think we've definitely say we've fixed that. So with all of that being said, we'll close this video out.